What's up, everybody? It's your boy, two-time Olympic high jumper, Jamie Nieto. Now, on my road to the London Olympic Games, I met some new and interesting people. And I had a chance to hang out with some old friends as well. I was able to sit down and talk to them about what was going on in their mind before and or after the Games, to get some inspirational words from them, and also to figure out what else they're into. So sit back, relax, and check out my show called Holla at your boy. Let's go. This week on Holla at your boy, my guy, Willie Banks. Banks. <laughs> Tell me what it was like competing at the 84 and the 88 Olympic Games. Well, it was, it was wonderful. Of course, you know, being in the Olympics is also just uh, the most incredible thing that you can do as, a, as an athlete. And uh, I, had, I had a great time. Unfortunately, I didn't win. I, I was, uh, you know, I anticipated wins, but both times I went in with injury. Um, it's just one of those things. Breaking the world record in 1985, did it feel like a world record day? I had this feeling that I was going to break the world record. I don't know about a lot of jumpers, but I do know that many of the world record holders that I have spoken to have had something like a premonition. Mm -hmm. They knew they were gonna do it before, and I, I had a specific feeling mm -hmm. that I was going to do it. When I arrived, it was warm and sunny. Everybody was, was jumping really well. And on my first attempt, I fouled a big jump. And as I went back to put my headphones on and, my, and, and started stretching and dancing to the music, I felt something in the back of my, my head. And I closed my eyes and I watched myself jump. And I said, oh my God, that's it. I'm gonna break the world record on this next jump. So I went over to my friend Lee Balkin and I said, Lee, I'm gonna break the world record on my next jump. And he thought I was nuts, but you know, I, I just knew I was gonna do it. I went to the judge and I said, look, you gotta watch this carefully because I'm gonna break the world record on my next jump. Got up, didn't need to uh, really concentrate because I knew I was gonna do it. I ran down, hop, skip, jump, world record. Wow. It was a fantastic feeling. One of the first people to get the crowd clapping, what made you go to the crowd and have that interaction with them? It started in Stockholm in 1981. I was there jumping and there was some, quite frankly, some drunk guys in the stands who were mimicking me. And uh, each time I jumped, more and more people would start clapping. And so as I got better and better, the stadium got bigger, more and more people started watching what I was doing. And every time I went somewhere, they wanted me to get the clapping going. So I did. And so everywhere I jumped, people were clapping. People gotta understand that people come to be entertained. You can't just go out and do your event and expect people to want to see it. Because anybody can do it. You have to entertain people. So now that you're retired, uh, what else are you into? I still jump. I coach, I'm on the board of directors of USA Track and Field, I'm on the board for the USA Track and Field uh, Foundation, you know, I have a business in Japan, and I do a lot of charity work. Hi, I'm Willie Banks, former world record holder in the triple jump, and I just holla at your boy. Thanks for tuning in, make sure you guys subscribe, and tune in next week for another holla at your boy. Peace. <laughs>